Hey guys, Dirt here. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about something different. Now we're going to be doing a toy review and I know you're thinking, what? A toy review? Yeah, I know. That's what we're doing here today. But I'm usually when I come in here and I talk about a toy, we're working as some sort of advocate for you, whether or not we believe you should go out and buy it or whether it's something that you should avoid and not buy. However, today I can't do that because what we're going to be talking about is this bootleg this knockoff this is a sound wave 25th anniversary bootleg uh, knockoff you can order uh, online on ebay a couple weeks ago on it figures i was talking to intern rick about the uh, new masterpiece sound wave coming out and i was talking about how one of these would be uh, you know fun to have uh you know to hold you over until the real one came out or whatever and because of course it's so much cheaper than the masterpiece and so of course one was sent to me and uh so i can do a review of it today but it's not an official uh, piece of merchandise. It's not licensed, you know, so I can't tell you, hey, this thing is great. Go out and buy it. But we can take a look at it today, and that's exactly what we're going to do. At first glance, this knockoff Soundwave actually looks pretty good. He's got all the accessories that you'd expect. His shoulder rocket launcher, his handheld missile launcher, and you can see here that he's got the dual cassette spot from the 25th anniversary. So this isn't based off the actual G1 version, it is based off the newer version of him. And some of the stickers aren't applied with the best quality and care, because after all, let's face it, this is a bootleg. And while it looks nice for the most part, you can see here that as I was trying to move him around to show you the different sides of him, he kept wanting to fall over. There was a pretty good reason for this. His foot. His foot was so loose that he had a hard time being moved around and still standing up. You can see here that I can just easily flick it with my finger. That's something that really shouldn't be happening. It should be locked into place. So, obviously, there are some quality control issues with this knockoff. Now his transformation mode is pretty straightforward. If you've ever used a sound wave before that would turn into one of these cassette players, you know exactly what you're doing here. I will say, however, that some of the joints felt a little stiff. When moving his arms, I'm almost afraid I'm going to break it. Uh, and then here on the legs, this leg, when folded up, doesn't exactly go flush into the body. The uh, spot for the foot is just a little bit smaller than the spot where it's supposed to hook into. On one side it's fine, on the other side it just doesn't quite fit. Maybe if I loosen it with a screwdriver it might work, but there's just no way to force it without possibly breaking it. Now except for this one foot that won't quite fit that will haunt me for the rest of my life, his alt mode actually looks pretty good. Switch on the side here actually moves. You've got the battery cover and belt clip on the back if you want to look handsome putting it on your belt. And you got the dial that turns on the side. You can even press the eject button and it opens and closes smoothly. It does come with this cardboard insert of the Ravage cassette and it's just there so that you've got something to uh, you know cover that hole up when there's no actual cassette. But as you can see, again, except for that leg that doesn't quite fit, the alt mode looks pretty good. I remembered how amazed I was as a child when I learned that his weapons actually transformed as well. You can remove the missile out of the one and remove the warheads off of the other to turn them into these shapes. If you're not familiar with these shapes, these are more or less the shapes of AA batteries. Now what do you do with AA batteries? I know you ask yourself that all the time. Well, you're going to open the back of the sound recorder sound wave and slide them in just like batteries on an actual cassette player. It's one of the greatest things that they did in the original Transformers line, and it's great to see that they've included it here. One small problem though, that battery cover is really cheap. It's difficult to get all the pieces to fit in the same spot at the same time because it's so pliable. No matter how hard I tried, I always had problems getting the two tabs at the top to fit at the same time the two tabs at the bottom would fit. And I was afraid to push it too hard because it does feel like some of it may snap somewhere along the line. And the last thing you want to do is break your new toy, even if it is a knockoff. So I did the best I could, and for the most part, I'm just going to live with a tab sticking out every so often. I mean, why not? I've got this leg that doesn't quite fold into place, right? Now this guy does come with two cassettes, the two cassettes that you'd expect. 
you get Laserbeak here, who is the bird that transforms into a cassette. And again, overall, he looks very nice. If you don't look too closely, you wouldn't really know that he's a knockoff in his bird form. But once you start taking off the weapons and folding them back into place, you start to realize that not everything folds back together the way it should. For instance, his beak sticks out a little bit. No matter how hard you push, it's not going in all the way. And when you turn him over, you can see that the label side actually looks pretty bad, and that's after I've readjusted them as best I could. So not only do the labels uh, not quite look right, but he'll never stand up correctly because that stupid beak just won't fold into place. Now his other cassette is Ravage, the one you'd probably expect him to come with, and again, Ravage looks pretty good. All things considered, he's a pretty good stand-in. And he's super easy to transform just like he was back in the day. You're not going to win any college scholarships figuring out how to turn him back into cassette form. And unlike Laserbeak, his actual cassette label is printed on, so it's never askew, you never have to peel it off and stick it back on right. One weird thing though, is that his legs are smooth on the front and on the back it's got the little tabs that would be on the bottom of a cassette. So on the cassette side it's smooth and on the robot side it's got the little cassette piece. So somewhere along the line they flipped the mold, never figured out how to fix it. Now as I said, this is made from the molds of the 25th anniversary Soundwave, so it does hold two cassettes. And yes, both cassettes you can fit inside this version. However, it's kind of a snug fit and you do have to finagle them a little bit. Some of the tabs on the inside aren't quite cut cleanly as they need to be. So you either have to push through the little bits of plastic from the mold that didn't quite get cut off or you're going to have to cut them off yourself. But I mean, hey, it's a small price to pay, especially considering you might get one where the leg actually fits. This thing's going to drive me nuts. No matter how long I have it, that leg is just always going to drive me crazy. And as nice as it is to have a place for the batteries and the cassettes, what are you supposed to do with all the rest of this stuff? This doesn't have anywhere to go. It doesn't fold into anything. It doesn't attach to anything. You just have a pocket full of extra stuff with no place to put it. I dare say that in the land of knockoffs, this one overall is pretty good. Although you're going to keep them in robot mode, not alt mode. That alt mode just doesn't quite fit together right. But here in robot mode, he actually looks really good. And while I can't tell you to buy him, I can't tell you not to. So is the knockoff Soundwave a perfect replacement for either the 25th anniversary or the new masterpiece? No, of course not. Uh, quality control issues are very lax on this one. Uh, there's no way you're going to be getting the same joy that you're going to get from holding uh, one of the actual, you know, Takara or uh, Hasbro figures. Um, it just it feels cheap it's light things rattle um you know it's not 100 percent perfect but is it a good thing to tide you over until you can actually purchase the more expensive masterpiece well that's up to you to decide whether or not you want to go down that road i'm not going to tell you one way or another whether you should or shouldn't buy it but i will say that it is actually a nice looking piece to just leave as is in the uh, robot mode and leave it on your shelf uh, it does a pretty good job of being a stand-in for the actual figure, but nothing, nothing compares to having legitimate merchandise. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.